Hi guys and uh, welcome back to Fragments of Infinity Level 2. And today, uh, b before I move on, I, again I apologize for the uh, lack of, uh, 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 what's the word I'm thinking of, uh, just frequency of these videos. Um, I'm, right now I'm working on a new record which at first it was just going to be a casual thing and now I'm taking it quite seriously so all my free time whenever I have it is spent there at the studio. Today we're going to talk about secondary dominant chords, okay? Sounds fancy, really easy concept um, and the beauty of this is this is step, uh, well kind of step two in learning how to play through jazz progressions. You already know about the modes now we're entering the major minor key system and there are different sets of rules. Now, what is a secondary dominant chord? Um, well, before I go into that, I, I'd just like to talk a little bit about jazz for a second. Jazz music, uh, which make, one reason why it's such a wonderful form is that it employs all three of the systems we have. The Greek modes, the major minor key system, and, uh, and the blues. If you were to look at the hard rock of the 60s, you'd say it's mostly modal music. And what modal music simply means is you have a root chord from a key and then the rest of the chords that surround it and go home to it are all from the same key. So I know when people talk about modal jazz, it's all this fancy thing, you know, they're thinking of some fancy shit. It's not fancy. Uh, modal jazz basically is saying that you have a root chord from a key and you use only the chords from that key. Uh, to create a mode. And the other aspect of it is to stay within that mode. You cannot tweak the dominant seventh. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about right now, but the dominant seventh you could alter like crazy and change the notes of. But when you change the notes of the dominant seventh, you're altering the very scale you started with. So uh, that's no longer modal. Modal is when everything, all the chords sit within one key. That's it. Okay. Uh, an idea of modal music would be. Uh, uh, a G mixolydian progression where I have the chords, here's my root, and I have a progression like G, F, C, G. What it is with, what is it with G strings? They're always going out of tune. Okay. Uh, yeah, the hard rock of uh, late 60s is modal, so you do a lot of chord progressions like this. That's totally modal because all those three chords are from within the key of C where G is the root. I swear I tuned this guitar right before I, I uh, started video. All right, uh, so yeah, uh, so that's what modal means. Um, now, uh, before I go on, I need to talk about a concept. It seems to be my concept because I talk to jazz players and they don't think this way. Uh, the concept of through scales. And I think I've talked about it before, but it's a very important concept because it makes it easier. Once you know how to analyze music, it makes it much easier to improvise through jazz progressions. Um, so a through scale basically is if you have a set of chords, let's say uh, D minor 7, G7, C, to, uh, C major 7, A minor 7. Now all those chords including their little extensions, not just D minor but D minor 7. Uh, actually I'm going to do G13, what they call G13 here. Uh, C major 7 and A minor 7, all the notes of all those chords are from the key of C. That means that um, I have a through scale, which is basically the C major scale. I'll demonstrate. I happen to have my looper handy, so I'll set up this progression. So now I'm just going to play a C scale. tempted to play some blues and blue notes in there, but I'm just trying to demonstrate the pure scale, so that for that. Um, Alright, so uh, 
that's what a through scale is. I didn't have to think of what chord am I on now, what chord am I on now, what chord am I on now. Now, a lot of jazz does require you to think like that, but when you develop a keen eye uh, for keys, like keys that are being set up in jazz by way of the 2-5, which we'll discuss in the future. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, the song Lady Bird, jazz tune. We have a C major 7, then F minor 7, B flat 7. That's pointing to the key of E flat major. So against these two chords, I play an E flat major. Uh, then it goes back to C major 7, then it does B flat minor 7, E flat 7 to A, ma a flat major 7. Again, that's 2, 5, 1 in the key of A flat. So all I do when those changes Okay, I'm going to tell you guys right now, do not buy a Zoom camera. Man, does this camera suck. Um, it, it shuts itself off whenever it wants to. Uh, although the, the sound quality and the video quality is rather nice, uh, it just has a bunch of bugs. Like it says my card is full when it isn't full, and then I have to reformat the card in order for it to say that it's not full anymore. Crazy. Anyway. <laughs> So, ungraceful edit, I was talking about how, um, how you just play through the changes. So, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate with uh, not playing rhythmically, but just doing the, the chords as they move through uh, the first bunch of bars of Lady Bird. So, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, okay. Just that. Now, as I said, we have a C major 7, then F minor 7, and B flat 7. That is a 2 5 pointing us to the key of E flat major, which means against this chord and this chord, I play E flat major. All right, going back, then I have a B flat minor 7 to E flat 7, in this case, E flat 9, to A flat major 7. Those three chords are of the key of A flat B flat minor, E, e flat 7, and A flat major. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you. For, uh, I'll play this loop back with the C major 7, F minor 7, and B flat 7, C major 7, B flat minor 7, E flat 7, A flat major 7. I know you guitar players, these flat keys are probably flummoxing you. I get that. Guitar is not a flat key instrument, so it's a little, gets a little weird. But here we go. C major scale. Now E flat major scale. C again. Now A flat major scale. And there it is, okay? Uh, so that's the concept of a through scale. Now what jazz players do is they say, oh, I'm on a C major, I'll play this scale on a C major. Oh, I'm on an F minor here, I'll play this scale on an F minor, and I'll play this scale on the B flat seven. So the problem is it's so thinky. Now you can't train yourself, I've certainly done it, to, to think chord, 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 uh, but it's much more fluent. And what you do is you grab the real book, and once you learn how to detect chords of the same key, you just like outline to yourself, okay, this is the key of E flat, that's the key of A, blah, 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 and then you know what to do, all right? But now we're also dealing with the major minor key system, so there's not just major keys, but now there are minor keys, as they call them. All right, so, um, the, uh, so that's the idea of through scales, and that's the way I'm going to teach you to think, all right? Uh, once you have that latitude and relaxation of not having to worry chord, 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 then while you relax, you could start thinking chord, 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 because now you're, you're chill. You're not uh, like stressing over what, what's the next chord is coming up because you know you're okay playing the, the scale that you're in, okay? Now, uh, Now, uh, it, let's look at, let's ignore this top part here and just look at, oh no, we can't do that either. Uh, let's ignore everything except these chords, this string of chords of the key of C, right? Now, if we go up one, two, three, four, five steps from C, we get a G7, which resolves to C, okay? Now, the theorist said, well, 
If I go five steps up from D minor and I make that a dominant seventh chord, will that relax the D minor? D, E, F, G, A, one, two, three, four, five. I turn A minor into A7 and I get what's called, ta-da, secondary dominant. A7 will indeed resolve to D minor very nicely. I will demonstrate. So I'm going to play C major 7, A7, D minor 7, G7. All right, so here we go. Now, oh. Before I do that, <laughs> I didn't talk about the minor seven. I just want you to hear how A7 relaxes to D minor, so. You can hear that. Now if we go through each and every chord of the key of C, we go up five steps from E, one, two, three, four, five, we get a B note. Will B7 rela uh, relax to E minor? Yes, indeed it will. All right. I go five steps up from F, and I'm going to have to come around the treadmill for this. One, two, three, four, five. I turn C into C7. Will it resolve to F? Yes, it will. So I could be in the key of C, but then do a C7, and that will go right to F. Okay. Uh, if I go, uh, where are we? F, G. Five steps up from G, one, two, three, four, five. I turn D into D7. Will D7 resolve to G7? Yes, it will. Now, that's a special case because it's a dominant resolving to a dominant. So that means that next dominant that comes up must resolve or go somewhere. So uh, here's the key of C, and here's D7, G7, C. And you notice it has kind of like an old ragtimey feel or, you know, 1890s. All right, now um, we go to A. One, two, three, four, five. We wind up five steps away as E7. Will E7 resolve to A minor? You bet. I don't need to demonstrate this. I think you're getting the drift. And. Uh, That's it, the B diminished cannot be resolved to, it's two tenths. All right, so that's that for that. Now, a way to find secondary dominance of a key is kind of easy. You know the uh, A shapes in the bar chords, uh, here's major, minor, and seventh, right? If I do the chord family template of C using that style of uh, bar chord, I get C, D minor, E minor, F, G7, A minor. You could stop at A minor, B diminished is part of G7, don't worry about it. So now, what you do is, on top of every one of those chords, you put um, the E shape dominant 7 above it. So above C, you put G7. Above D minor, you put A7. Above E minor, you put B7. Above F, you put uh, C7. Above G7, you put D7. And above A minor, you put E7. And you notice this is a very classical sound. Now the question is, when that dominant, first of all, when you think about it, a dominant 7 in the 5 step away position, which I've just demonstrated, can resolve to one of three types of chords, a major chord, a minor chord, or another dominant seventh chord. Now, the general rule is, and this is uh, this will work all the way across the board for you, if a dominant seventh is five steps away from a minor chord, all right, let's say, um, well, I have C, A7, D minor 7, G7 set up. Now, what I'm gonna do is A7 to D minor, I have to play here, we, here it comes, D harmonic minor scale or D melodic minor scale will work. Uh, so, let's, I'll play the progression and I'll demonstrate. So I got a C scale first. All right, did you hear that? That was the melodic, uh, the uh, harmonic minor. All 
right, so what I played was D harmonic minor against that uh, A7 to D minor. A7 to D minor. All right. Now, uh, let's try the B7 to E minor. So I'll do something like. Uh, case of minor, uh, that would be the sixth chord, that would be C to E7 to A minor. So I'll put that progression together, C, E7, A minor, D minor, G7. So here, C scale. I played A harmonic minor. Listen to it again. E7. And once again, C to E7 to A minor. Okay, so, uh, so that. Now we have the case of dominant resolving to major. There's only one case of that. And that's uh, C to C7 to F. What C7, if you look at the key of F, the proprietary dominant seventh of the key of F major is C7. So when I see C7 going to F, my through scale is an F major scale. Let me lay that down. C7, F. record so let me try that again oh wait something is weird here okay once more uh, C C7 C9 F major 7 G11 Back to my C major. C uh, F major scale. So now, uh, there's one more case, and that is a dominant seventh resolving to a dominant seventh. In that case, you cannot have a through scale. You must pay attention to both dominant sevens. Why? Because a dominant seventh defines a key. And uh, as soon as I see a D7, that's defining the key of G major. As soon as I see a G7, that's defining the key of C major. And again, let me demonstrate. I'm going to do... Uh, C major, then 2, 5, A minor 7 to D7, to D minor 7 to G7. Now these two fives, A minor 7, D7, A is the 2 of the key of G, D7 is the 5 of, key of, of the key of G. Then my D minor 7 to G7, D minor is the 2 of the key of C, and, the five, uh, five, and G7 is the 5 of the key of C. So I'll lay that down. Actually, you know what? I shouldn't. 
I shouldn't complicate things with two fives. So let me do straight dominance. So I'm going to do C major, D7, G7. All right. Um, oops, sorry. I didn't tell you what scale to play. Associated with a pure dominant seventh that especially isn't going to a minor key, you play the Mixolydian scale of the same root. A Mixolydian scale is just basic major scale, but you flat the seventh step. So in other words, against D7, I'm going to play a D major scale with a flat seven in it. Against G7, I'm going to play a G major scale with a flat seven. Well, what is a G major scale with a flat seven? It's a C major scale. What is a D major scale with a flat seven? It's a G major scale. So I think key of G, key of C. That's simple. So uh, first key of C. G major. Now C major. All right, C major chord. G major chord. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, it's a D major chord. Let me call that again. C major chord. G, uh, D7. C, but we're back to the C scale. C major scale. G major scale. C major scale. And you notice how it perfectly fits in. So to round that off on a graph, I took the uh, target A and the three qualities of A, A major, A minor, and A7. So if E7 goes to A minor, uh, you can play the harmonic or melodic minor scale. If uh, E7, I forgot my 7 there, but if E7 goes to A minor, you play, oh wait, what the hell? E7 to A major, okay? Uh, then you play an A major scale. And what's the little notation here? And all of the modes of A major. Why? Because they're all an A major scale. Uh, E7 going to A minor is you'd play the A harmonic minor scale or a melodic minor scale. And we'll get more into the details of when to make that choice later on down the line. Uh, and then uh, dominant 7 to dominant 7, you'd play E mixolydian here, A mixolydian here. E mixolydian is the key of A major. A mixolydian is the key of D major. So you could say you could play an A major scale here and a D major scale here. And uh, now, uh, here's a quick trick. I think I showed you how the, uh, the dominant seven, I showed you on guitar, but here's the key of C and G7 goes to C, A7 goes to D minor. Why? Five steps up from D is A, and we change that to A7, we'll relax to D minor, so on and so forth. Now here's a little trick I figured out one day, is if you took all, all the chords of the key of C, including the diminished chord, and turned them into seventh chords, uh, C, instead of uh, C major, you have C7, instead of D minor, D7, so on and so forth. And notice F7 is parentheses, that's the one chord we will not use, but these, this uh, uh, six chords right here are represented in this, all the secondary dominance upstairs there, so we have G7, A7, B7, C7, D7, and E7, just like here. So if you turn all the chords of a key into a dominant seventh, omitting the four chord, which takes us to a different key altogether, uh, that's basically uh, all your secondary dominance of a key. The other way to do it is like I showed you on guitar. <laughs> What if a secondary dominant is going to a secondary dominant? Let's say in the song Mr. Sandman. Uh, all right, so that chord is a string of uh, dominant sevenths moving in fourths once we go down the half. So we're in the key of B flat. 
A7 would normally, in the key of B flat, right? Let me do the key of B flat. There's a chord family template. Now, A7 normally goes to D minor, but in this case, it's going to D7. But what you do is when that A7 is there, treat it as if it's going to the D minor chord, and you play D harmonic minor against that A7, all right? But when you get to the D7, you have to change up again. Remember, every dominant seventh chord that shows up, you have to change your scale shape. So uh, now, where would D7 have gone in the key of B flat as a secondary dominant? Um, D7 would have gone to G minor. So when that D7 comes up, I, I play G harmonic minor up until I get to the G7 chord. Then. I don't play the G harmonic minor anymore. Why? Because it's a seventh chord. I must change my scale. Uh, where does D7 normally go? G7 normally go in the key of B flat. It goes to C minor. So I do C harmonic minor there. And then uh, uh, C7 goes to F7. And in this case, it would have normally gone to F7, not a minor chord. So I play C mixolydian there and F mixolydian, which is the key of B flat there. Let me uh, lay down the progression and I'll demonstrate. I'll do it very slow so you can, I could call the changes and tell you what's going on. A7, I'm playing D harmonic minor here. D7, I'm gonna play G harmonic minor here. G7, I'm gonna play C harmonic minor here. C7, I'm gonna play C mixolydian. F7, I'm going to play the B flat major scale. Now D harmonic, G harmonic. I play C harmonic minor there, C mixolydian. B flat major. Again, B flat major. D harmonic minor. G harmonic minor. C harmonic. C mixolydian. F mixolydian. That's it for today. Thanks very much. I'll catch you on the uh, rebound. All right, take care.